I've been saying all along, combine, pro days, they don't mean anything. They wouldn't mean anything. The only thing I took away from Geno Smith's pro day yesterday was the way he answered questions. He sounded like a starting quarterback. Everything else, I just watched the tape, see how he played. Let's ask Geno Smith. Geno, what am I supposed to be concentrating on here when I look at the combine, uh, pro day? Does it mean anything to you? Uh, I mean, they do from a standpoint is to the, that um, you know everyone goes through it. So, obviously, I have to do my – uh, due diligence and, and go through it and, um, you know, just go through the entire process. Um, you know, it doesn't, in a sense, mean anything as far as production goes on the field. But uh, there is a process uh, that takes place. And, uh, you know, the scouts, the GMs, and the coaches uh, really know what they're doing. And it takes time to get to know someone because you don't just want to bring a guy in based on what you see on tape because uh, you, you might not be getting the same guy. And, uh, you know, especially at this position of quarterback, everything is going to be evaluated. So uh, this process is one that, uh, you know, it's, it's taxing. It, uh, it takes a toll on you, but, um, you know, it has to be done. Give me the quarterbacks that you study. Well, I study them all. But, I mean, from just as of right now, the guys that I studied in college were uh, Peyton. I studied Drew Brees. I studied Tom. And I also studied Aaron Rodgers. What are you picking up from them? Well, uh, for one, you know, each one of those guys, and it's not just, you know, them, but, you know, every good starting NFL quarterback, every great quarterback, they all have similar characteristics. And, uh, you know, for one, it's leadership, it's command in the huddle, um, you know, complete dominance at the line of scrimmage, and, uh, you know, just knowing everything that you must know as far as where your receivers are, um, you know, where where you need to check protections, where where your hot throws are. And then, um, you know, there's a list of things as far as fundamentals go that uh, you know, I think every quarterback does a little differently, but uh, it's still pretty much the same. And uh, not to mention those guys win games, which is uh, the biggest factor to me. But you're talking about guys who are known for being passers. They're not runners. Um, are you going in with the mindset of view me as a drop-back quarterback who – and sort of maybe like Aaron Rodgers, who's athletic enough to keep a play alive or gain yards there. But, you know, Brady doesn't run, Peyton doesn't run, Breeze doesn't run, but those are the guys you're studying. Well, for one, I studied those guys because, you know, I believe the game is played from the neck up. You know, I have physical tools, but uh, if, you, if you don't got it, you know, between the ears, you know, you won't succeed, especially at that level because it's all mental once you get there. So, um, you know, I prepare my – my mental side of it, just as I'll prepare my physical side of it. So when it comes to uh, when it comes to the mental aspect of it, all those guys have have great intangibles. Tell those guys to be quiet in the back. All those guys have great intangibles that um you know translate well. No, no, Gino, Gino, t- tell those guys who are making noise behind you. Who, who's making noise behind you? Tell them to be quiet. Yeah, I just told him. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, you know what? You, you, you got to quiet the crowd down. You're down at the two-yard line. Yeah. yeah you got to quiet. <laughs> but but could you run the pistol if you wanted to? Could you do what Kaepernick is doing or RG3? Oh, yeah, for sure. I've ran the pistol in college, um, ran some redox and stuff. Uh, the thing about that is I wasn't asked to do it uh, the last two years. So, you know, people say, well, why didn't you run more? Um, you know, that was just the result of the system I was in. Uh, had I been asked to do it, I'd have been fine with it. I have no problem with running the ball, but... Uh, you know, I was in the air raid system, which was primarily based from the shotgun, which was primarily based from within the pocket. And that's why I played the game. You know, I wasn't going to go outside of the system or play outside of myself or my scheme and put our team in jeopardy. How important is being the number one overall pick to you? Honestly, just getting picked is, uh, you know, just a team come through. Whether it's number one or, you know, the last guy in the draft. Uh, once I receive my opportunity to play, to practice, to um, you know, to be that team leader, then I will. You know, I have, you know, no, um, you know, no, I would say, you know, I have fully, full confidence in what I do on the field, and I understand that it takes a lot of hard work. So, uh, you know, I have, I will have no regrets if I'm not um, drafted number one overall. So, I mean, when it comes to that, I'm not even worried about it. What about being the number one quarterback taken? As a competitor, you know, you want to be the best, but, Teams are going to do what they feel is best for their team. And uh, like I said, whoever brings me in is going to get the same guy with the same mentality um, that I had in college, that I had in high school, that I've had all my life, and that's to work hard for everything you're going to get. And uh, try and improve myself and, and really develop my craft and perfect it. 
Well, good to visit with you, Gino. And as I said, and I meant it, what you said after your uh, pro day probably uh, had uh, more of an impact on me because you sounded like you're a starting quarterback, that uh, you know what you have to do to be a leader. And uh, I think that's important. You're right. You can look at the game tape, but also they want to know the person. Uh, good luck. And uh, as you get closer to draft day. Okay, thank you. All right, Geno Smith, former West Virginia quarterback. Had a great pro day, by the way.